Empire. Five things I learned from another wild and wacky week in the NFL action, and then some other important information off the field about where things are headed for the NFL and the NFL Players Association as CBA negotiations are about to start ramping up once again. This is the Football Jones Podcast. What's up, everybody? I am Mike Jones. Thanks for coming back for another episode. You can read me at usatoday.com. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ByMikeJones. And if you're not already, download and subscribe to this podcast. Tell your friends, tell your family. Coming to you once again with another meaty episode of all kinds of stuff going on in the league. Week six in the NFL was full of more action. Um, we're, we're starting to see, we're almost to the midway point of the season here. We're starting to see some things. The picture is becoming even more clear. And then there's other things that we're looking at and we're kind of scratching our head wondering, whoa, what does all this mean? Going to get to those five things I learned. And then after that, going to have a visit with Demora Smith, the executive director of the NFL Players Association, um, as we talk about what's going on with the CBA and those negotiations, and if they're able to get a deal done to avoid a work stoppage following the 2020 season. But first, my five things I learned. Number one is that the pretenders and the contenders are starting to come into clarity here. Uh, And there are such things as snags, and there's such things as reality. I think a team like the Kansas City Chiefs, they lost their second straight game. I'm not worried about them, though. I I do feel like they have issues. If you listen to Thursday's episode, Therese Paler of Yahoo Sports and I talked about some of those issues, being their offensive line, their defense, all of that's being exposed because Patrick Mahomes is not healthy. We're seeing when he lacks that mobility, um, their offense is not as special as it is um, normally and potent as it is when he can do all his Houdini acts. But it's now being shown that they need to work on their offensive line. They've got to get better up front. They've got to get better on defense. They're giving up too many yards, especially against physical rushing attacks. Um, But I think almost it's almost a blessing in disguise that Mahomes is a little bit hobbled because it's letting them see that, okay, when we don't have him masking our deficiencies, we really have stuff we've got to work on the issues with the pass protection is real the issues with their defense um, when they're not scoring all these points you, the more of the focus is on how the defense can't stop anybody so they've got to focus on that stuff get it shored up while they try to help Patrick Mahomes get healthy he's got to take care of that ankle um, he needs his teammates now after he's been masking deficiencies for them for so long they need to now mask his deficiencies and play better all around him. Meanwhile, a team like the Cowboys, you know, there was a lot of hype about them. People thought they were Super Bowl ready. I did not see that. And that's why in my um, early season predictions, I did not have them making the playoffs. I have them just narrowly missing it. Now, of course, they still could, uh, but they've lost three straight now. Um, They lost to the Jets who you know got their first win of the season. Um, it seems like teams have, have figured out Kellen Moore and his play calling tendencies. Um, you know their defense has got some issues as well. The Cowboys have really got to get things figured out in a hurry. Fortunately for them, the Eagles lost as well to the uh, Minnesota Vikings, who are now four and two, and they have a you know could wind up being a team that gets a wild card. I don't see them overtaking um, the Packers, but uh, the Cowboys. They they really they they're they're not as formidable as we thought. Uh, another team like the Browns not ready for prime time. We're seeing that now. They were at home, couldn't get the win there. Of course, they went against a very a, a good team that I think is, could possibly be a playoff team. But the Browns have got to still work on this chemistry, cohesion, and everything. They've got a lot of pieces, but putting it all together and doing it at a high level is a different thing. Another team that's hit a snag right now are the the Rams. Um, I'm not worried about them long term. We're seeing here that if they don't have Todd Gurley, an effective Todd Gurley, 
that the pressure on Jared Goff is real. Um, and the, the 49ers had the perfect recipe. They went after him. Uh, they, and, and, you know, the Rams now, like, you know, losing, you know, two key games, divisional games, um, you know, they, they have to worry. But there's probably a sense of urgency in that locker room now. I know Sean McVay, I know that coaching staff, they are going to work hard to try to figure out how to, to ease pressure on Goff, how to compensate while they're waiting for Gurley to get healthy again. Um, and I think they're going to be okay, but they're hitting a snag. Fortunately for them, it's early in the season, just like with the Chiefs, early in the season, so they can go back to the drawing board and fix things. Uh, but some of these other teams, uh, it's going to you know, be a real struggle for them. Number two thing I learned as we we're speaking about the Rams that the 49ers are for real. That undefeated record is legit because of their defense. Yes, Jimmy Garoppolo is playing pretty well. Yes, they have a potent rushing attack and creative passing concepts, but their defense is the difference maker. The the New England Patriots had the best defense in the league, but the 49ers are pretty freaking close. They get after the quarterback. They force turnovers. Um, it's hard to run against them. It's hard to pass against them. They've got playmakers all over the place, and so the 49ers are going to be in the playoffs this year. We'll see if, if they're going to duke it out with the Rams for winning that division, um, but it's going to be a dogfight, I think, between the 49ers, the Rams, and the Seahawks in that division. Um, number three item here that uh, teams that should be contending for playoff spots that aren't are the Falcons and the Chargers. They are in real trouble. Dan Quinn losing once again, losing on the road to a, a rebuilding young uh, team uh, like the Cardinals. That should not happen. You've got a veteran head coach. You've got a veteran roster. You should not be losing to a rookie head coach, rookie quarterback. Um, Dan Quinn very well could be the next head coach that's fired. Jay Gruden was the first. Quinn could be the next. And the Chargers losing at home. And I know the home field advantage is, is subjective for them because they're in, in, you know, in a transition period there. Um, they don't really have a whole lot of real home field advantage, but you've got a, a, a roster of players that you should be able to play at a high level and should not be outdone by a team with their third string quarterback in the, uh, the Steelers. So, you wonder if they're going to be up for some changes um, if they don't live up to, ex to expectations. But right now, those are two teams that should be playoff contenders that look nowhere near playoff ready. Item number four, that this is definitely the year of the young backup quarterback. Um, because as we talked about uh, the Chargers there, Delvin Hodges, third string quarterback, undrafted rookie, stepping in for Mason Rudolph, who is stepping in for Ben Roethlisberger, leads the Steelers to a victory on the road. Um, you know, we saw Kyle Allen, Garner Minshew, all of these young guys that you, you would figure aren't ready for prime time, have no problem at all directing NFL offenses. I think some of it has to do with the fact that there's a triple up effect. We're seeing kids in high school now run spread offenses. We're seeing them pass 50 times a game in college and so now they're getting to the nfl and yes it's a different game a different brand but they are used to throwing the ball a lot it's not like the old days where you're handing off handing off and then you come to the nfl and you have to do a lot of passing um they're ready to to throw the ball a lot offense coordinators are creative they're running concepts that are, that are similar to what these kids ran in college, and they're positioning them for success. And so um, we're seeing a changing of the guard um, at quarterback. And, you know, all this, when you see these young guys come in the games and play well, it just brings you back to the Redskins when you're scratching your head why Dwayne Haskins can't get on the field, why they can't give him a package that will position him to succeed. But again, we already know there's a lot wrong with the Redskins. And then lastly, my fifth thing, I am convinced after watching him in week six is that Lamar Jackson is going to be your MVP. It doesn't matter what kind of football you want him to play. He is capable of doing that. Last year, we thought that he was basically, you know, people said he was a running back at the quarterback position. This year, we've seen him throw the ball, looking like a pro. We've seen him run the ball. Yesterday, I know it was against the Bengals, a struggling team, but the effectiveness, whether he's running the ball passing the ball. Lamar Jackson is putting that team on his back and carrying them. They need to get things figured out with their defense so that way he's got more support. But this kid can do it all. 
tremendous growth out of him from year one to year two. And again, I think he's going to be your MVP. That's my five things for this week. It's going to be interesting to see how this thing continues to play out. When I come back, like I said, I'm going to sit down with Demoris Smith, NFL Executive Director from the NFL Players Association. I went out with him uh, and his team to Kansas City last week as he's been bouncing around the league, talking to players, updating them on the CBA negotiations, hearing from them, hearing their concerns. Um, and um, it was very enlightening for me um, to, to hear about what these guys um, want out of the CBA, what their questions are, um, and the most pressing football business matters on their minds um, away from the games. So when we come back, catching up with D. Smith. It was last Tuesday, I was in Kansas City, D. Smith, for the last five and a half weeks, was bouncing around, making his annual NFL tour, visiting with all 32 teams, um, hearing from them, uh, he and his team uh, of guys, um, educating them on um, you know, workers' comp situations, um, how to make sure that their injuries are covered for life. It's not on their insurance policies. If they file their workers' comp pay, uh, paperwork, um, the team's insurance policies will cover them for life, but they have to fill out that paperwork. Uh, things like that, educating them on how to prepare if there's a work stoppage, um, educating them on the new CBA. And so, you know, we talk a lot free agency and guarantee contracts and things like that when you think about the business side of football, but there's a whole other side that these guys are really interested in. But anyway, let's hear from D. Smith now. When you talk to guys, you don't mind walking, do you? No, that's fine. Let's make sure. Let's go. Okay. When you when you talk to guys and you hear from players, what's their biggest concern that come out of these <coughs> type of meetings? I know everybody kind of thinks that you know they're thinking guaranteed contracts or whatever, but what are you hearing from guys that they're most concerned about? I mean, about? I guess I mean, not being too sarcastic, but I mean, you were there, right? <laughs> so, what what didn't you hear anybody talk about? Anybody talk about guaranteed contracts? No. Uh -uh. Um, that's not, I mean, I'm not going to say that it's not important to our guys, but our guys understand the difference between guaranteed money and guaranteed contract. Right. And all of them understand that while the idea of a guaranteed, well, they, they understand now a couple of things. One, they understand that no none of the CBAs guarantee contracts. Right. 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 Our CBA um, language is just like basketball or, or, or baseballs. Um, they also know the history. They know that um, the landscape changed in the um, 1980s, 1990s in basketball when free agent players demanded guaranteed contracts and then their contracts became guaranteed more out of a manner of custom than, than any language in their CBA. Right. Um, but they also understand that while a guaranteed contract might be very good for an individual player, they also know that a certain number of guys get cut every year. If that player's contract is guaranteed, that's going to mean less money in the locker room next year mm -hmm. um, because that's going to be dead money for that team. So, you know, for us, I mean, you were there. The beauty of talking to these guys is we've spent a lot of time, you know, not just me, but more the, the team uh, that works at the PA, we spent a lot of time just educating them about the business of football, and frankly, they understand the business better than most of our sports writers. Uh -huh. Right, right. Um, and and so, you know, I know that there's always this projection um, about what an NFL player is or how an NFL player thinks, right. but um, again, you know, the takeaway that I always have is you sit in a team meeting like this, they, they probably have had happier days, right? right. Um, you know, but it's not like you walk into a locker room when a team has lost the previous week and everybody's mad and right, upset. Right. Oh, yeah. No, when you walk in here, they want to know about the business of football. They right. want to know, how do I ensure that I've got health care for my injuries? Um, they know now that if the league locks us out, um, they're going to cut off the insurance to their families right. um, 
and and you know when you have a young guy like Patrick Mahomes in the room and and he can talk about his father who was a baseball player who right. went through the strike in in 94 95 um, I mean not every player has that much of a personal connection but um, I think guys certainly understand now that a work stoppage can occur I think more players understand the potential and the reality of that now than they did in 2009 2010 because as much as I said it was going to happen you yeah. had a certain number of players who would say well no they're never gonna shut this game down right well would any owner shut this game down for a year or two in order to recoup um, um, you know points of uh, percentage points of revenue when those percentage points of revenue will be in excess of 150 million dollars a year well sure yeah yeah because you could shut the game down if they recouped two or three percentage points even five percentage points they'd make up for the lost season in three years right now it would it would screw the fans and and certainly hurt the players and probably hurt our business but the lesson to every one of these guys is our guys actually care more about the game of football than some of our owners do Right. right. <laughs> now, what's your level of optimism? I know about the, what the about message like is life? that. Oh, it's so close <laughs> that I'm it's close, really but you're saying it's not exactly as close yeah. as with what, what is about, optimism as far about as what? that you guys can avoid a work stoppage. Oh, the deal's not done. Kind. Right. Right. I don't. I don't have optimism. I don't have pessimism. Mm-hmm. The reality is, we're we're talking, but we're far apart. Right. So yeah. I, I'm not sure there is a. Um, or should be you know, optimism or pessimism. There's just the reality of where we are. And either the deal is done and you can relax and not prepare for a work stoppage or the deal isn't done and you can't relax and you need to prepare for a work stoppage. Gotcha. You, you talked about how guys are more educated this time around. The yeah, last time. Yeah, because, I, I didn't say did they're more. Start, I didn't say they they're more educated. educated they're more they aware. More aware. There you go. That of the likelihood of a work stoppage right. that I think guys were the last time. Because how soon? How far in advance? How many years ago did you start laying the groundwork for right now? For this, to um, make sure they were eighteen months ago. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so we probably. I'm sorry. Two years ago, we okay. started withholding uh, their royalty payments. Uh, two years ago. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And so, do you feel better just about your group, the conversations you have with them, oh, I, and just the, the responsibility, and just the way yeah. that they're they're having conversations with you to, to yeah. make sure they understand? It's everything. not so much that I I have a better feeling as compared to anything else. I think that I know that our guys are well um, understand the likelihood or the possibility of a work stoppage. Right. Um, I don't think that there is a level of, of belief that it could never happen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I know that our player leadership um, authorized us to start preparing for this two years ago. Right. So it's not so much that I feel better or worse. I Staying in the moment, right. um, you know, to use the one football phrase that I will use. But staying in the moment is just that I think that we are... Um, in a place where the guys understand the risk, they understand the potential upside, but they also understand that we're far apart. Good deal. How glad will you be to get, be off the road? Um, I will be very, very happy. <laughs> um, uh, I think the only person now who really cares that I'm home is the dog, since since our kids are kids gone. Are yeah, our kids are gone, and my golf wife's playing and, golf. Yeah. So other than that, the dog will be the dog will be thrilled. Yeah. Hey, D, thanks for your time. Awesome, man. man. Always Appreciate a pleasure. It. All right, I hope you found that interesting. I definitely learned a lot last week um, in my visit with them. I'm going to have a story that's coming out Tuesday um, about that trip uh, in more detail. But um, I know that D is saying, you know, until the deal is done, 
he's not optimistic he's not pessimistic but i from talking to people on the owner side of things there definitely is a real sense of urgency to get this deal done and so i believe that whether it's late this year or right after uh you know the the new year they're going to get this deal done it's going to be interesting to see how this thing is hammered out but um it looks like i wouldn't be surprised if there's an extended season we you know we could see them agree to a 17 18 game season um with a shortened preseason um you know we're gonna and it's gonna be interesting to see how they shape that thing there's a lot of haggling back and forth that that's also going to trigger um probably an adjustment with how they handle training camps or off-season workout programs to try to make sure they take care of the players bodies and the wear and tear also another item i remember we talked about um uh, the cba early in the podcast episodes with lorenzo alexander um of the buffalo bills but the talk about um uh, the length of contracts we could see contracts shortened by a year um you know it'll be interesting to see if uh the, how they handle the fifth year option how they handle franchise tags how they handle rookie contracts going forward um that's another item that's going to be very important and then also um the the veterans minimums the league minimum salaries guys at the bottom of the roster yes we know that the salary cap is going to go up and these big deals that we're seeing with a lot of guaranteed money those are going to continue to happen but the players are really also they want the younger guys the guys at the bottom of the roster to be better compensated as well so that minimum could go up the guys on the practice squad their salaries could go up just trying to figure out ways to make them more financially secure all that stuff's going to be hammered out i think that there's going to be concessions made on the part of the owners yes the players will have to give some as well but i think that the players are going to emerge from this cba negotiation having a new collective bargaining agreement that puts them in a a good standing um financially professionally and that's going to continue to improve the brand of the nfl we'll see what happens again a lot can you know progress or stall in these negotiations but from talking to people on the owner side there's definitely optimism and talking to some players as well they are optimistic they are preparing just as d and his team has been warning them prepare for a work stoppage but they feel optimistic as well anyway that's it for this week thanks so much for listening hope you enjoyed it drop me an email please or send me a Twitter or, or something. Let me know what you think. Email is mjones at usatoday.com. Twitter and Instagram at by Mike Jones. And then I will hear, be back here on Thursday as we look to week seven of the NFL action. Hope you guys have a great day.